Where we left off for our last session was to um, begin to unpack uh, process evaluation data collection processes. Uh, where we're aiming to go on uh, now is to discuss uh, impact evaluation, but logic models um, and outcomes. And I want us to hold that impact evaluations are specifically designed to determine if a program has actually had its intended effects. When we talked about process evaluation, if you remember, we were talking about if the program had actually reached its goals. Here, we're mostly interested in knowing if there has actually been a change in the specific target population or the specific social condition the program was addressing that would have changed as a result of the program. That is, now we're focusing on this idea that it is the program itself that has actually had an impact on the target population um, and or the social uh, condition. Oftentimes what I want to say is that impact evaluations are done at times when a new program it has been developed and we're interested in examining if the program has had its intended effects before we expand the program further. Um, oftentimes what program uh, impact evaluation offers us is that we're able to modify um, to improve the program effectiveness um, or gives us an opportunity to change uh, or modify uh, program goals um, as well. We do impact evaluations as well for accountability um, and funding. Um, and an impact evaluation is usually done by comparison outcomes for program participants, that's those individuals who are part of the program, to those of equivalent persons who have experienced something different or have not experienced the program at all. So this is a place where we're creating a comparison between those who have been part of the program and also having a comparison group that might have actually had a different program or did not uh, experience the program at all. Similarly to how we talked about process evaluation, um, impact evaluation is also relying on an impact uh, theory. Um, and as we think about the impact theory here, the impact theory here is really addressing the change process uh, that has been actuated by the program uh, that has improved the conditions of participants that are expected to result. So the underlying assumption that's actually making is that the processes and the changes that we would potentially see in individuals who participate in the program in which there, uh, there you see improve, uh, improvement in program participants are as a result of the actual um, program itself. Similarly, it relies on a casual theory that is describing this cause and effect sequence in which the actual services in the program are what's actually instigating uh, the causes of change that will ultimately lead to social benefits of those who are participating in the program. This is the ways that we're able to kind of um, see this cause and effect sequence. So when you read the Rossi, uh, Lipsy, and Freeman uh, chapter, they underscored program theory and logic models, right? And the reasons that we're going to really unpack logic models is because a logic model allows uh, the description of how the program should work to achieve the desired outcomes for program participants, right? Because I want us to hold, right, that when we're doing an impact evaluation, we're really assessing at this point, um, have individuals benefited from the program? Have we seen changes in the individuals who are in the program in social conditions that we can actually say it is the program itself that's actually had an impact on program participants? So uh, the logic model um, is relying on uh, four different pieces. One is the inputs. And the inputs are the resources that are actually put into the program. Those resources can include obviously funding, staff, it can include any partnerships that the program has, and it must include program participants themselves. If there are no program participants, there is actually no program. The inputs then allow uh, what the program does on a day-to-day -day basis, which are actually services, right? In some program evaluation services are referred to as activities, but without the inputs, we can have no services. Uh, 
um, to then the activities themselves are actually then connected to outputs. And outputs are the countable products resulting from the activities uh, themselves, um, which is oftentimes number of hours spent in therapy, uh, number of participants who assisted the program, so on and so forth, then then are then connected to actual outcomes. And so when we're thinking about outcomes, we're looking at the specific changes in program participants' behavior, knowledge, skills, level of functioning. And this is where I want us to remember what I've said around differentiating between goals and outcomes. I've highlighted the goals oftentimes are very broad in nature, uh, but goals are really around what the program is actually aiming to achieve. Outcomes here are around how does the program itself have a direct impact on the program participants through building knowledge, through building skills, through increasing levels of functioning, through shifting behavior. So we're talking about that direct impact um, to program participants. Um, the next area we're gonna think about is what short and long-term outcomes are. And the most important piece I want you to hold around impact evaluation is that impact evaluation is really aiming to ensure that we're able to assess short and long-term impacts from the place where uh, we're assessing the impact after individuals have left the program. So oftentimes, if it's a good enough program, we know that there are going to be shifts in those individuals who are in the program while they're in the program. But the point around impact evaluation is to be able to assess, can we actually say that individuals in the program have been able to maintain the impact of the program even after they're discharged? So when we begin to think about short-term uh, outcomes, we're looking at the changes that uh, you would see in individuals who have participated in the program after they've left the program, um, whether it is six months after the program or a year, two or three years after the program. Similarly to long-term outcomes, we're really looking at what are the expected changes that individuals who have participated in the program would have over time we're over time oftentimes being four to six years after individuals have actually left the program. What becomes important as you begin to think about your short and long term outcome development, specifically in your logic model, is that you have to be very clear around who the program targets um, and what would be realistic in terms of a time frame in thinking about um, assessing short and long term outcomes. So for example, if the target population is a population that has high mobility rates, right? We have to be intentional around perhaps assessing those short-term outcomes sooner than three years. Um, and similarly, if uh, the target population um, um, is, um, has a, a high mobility patterns, we have to think about how will we sh actually uh, assess those long-term outcomes before four to six years uh, as well. So part of what we're going to do now um, is really think about what is it that we uh, should think about in terms of outcomes as you're thinking about uh, developing some outcomes for the program you're proposing to evaluate. The first thing is really thinking about specificity. Um, outcomes actually have to be very specific um, in nature so that you're able to one operationalize how you're going to actually uh, be able to assess them that then speaks to being able to measure them. Um, but to be able to measure them, they actually have to be appropriate um, given the services that the program is actually off offering. And they cannot be grandiose because then we're not going to be able to uh, appropriately assess them, but also they're not going to be uh, attainable in nature. And what we're partly doing here is when we're thinking about measurement, right? Through being able to be specific, um, ensuring that they're measurable and assuring that they're appropriate given the services that we're providing and attainable. This is where we're going to be able to then uh, assess how successful a program is or how unsuccessful uh, the program um, is. So the next layer that we're going to add here is I'm going to walk you through a logic model. And in the logic model, um, as you develop your logic model, 
there's a couple of pieces that are going to become central for the development of the logic model itself. So at the top, what you begin to see is program. And this actually upfront describes the program specifically around who it targets, right? So when you first read this up front, it lets you know what the program is, what it does, but who it targets, right? So this specific mentoring program is the Southdale Outreach and Links Mentoring Program. It is a selective mentoring intervention program targeting fourth and fifth grade uh, Latino, Latina students who live in the Southdale neighborhood and attend Frank Alice Elementary School and Senate Middle School. So to be included in this program, right, one, you have to be a fourth and fifth grade Latinx student who lives in the Southdale, Southdale neighborhood and who attends uh, Frank Alice Elementary School or Senate Middle School. If you are not fourth or fifth grade Latinx or live in this neighborhood or attend these two specific schools, you are not eligible for the program. So part of your process will be to actually also include this piece around the program that you're proposing to evaluate. So the next piece I wanna highlight before I begin to talk about the inputs is there are program assumptions um, that are being made around the program itself, right? And what we're doing through this process around the logic um, and through actually developing the program is partly um, um, really seeing how is it that the program will be able to uh, address this assumption as well. So the program assumption that is being made in this program up front is that communities that are faced with poverty place children at risk and lack the necessary academic skills and resources as ELL limits choices for assessing higher education. So by providing additional resources through mentoring, children will be able to succeed more in school. So the underlying assumption that this program is actually made is that communities who have faced lower socioeconomic context actually lack academic resources, uh, but also resources to support English as a new language learners that actually will limit their choices to be able to assess higher education. And so it is assuming then that through providing additional resources, which in this case is mentoring, it will help uh, children succeed more in school. So given that context, the first thing we're gonna focus on are what are the inputs? What are the resources that are going uh, into the program? The first one is around this program received Department of Education funding. It also had a staff. It also received um, resources from the district, uh, from the school itself. It partnered with big brothers and big sisters. It also partnered with the local church and other community organizations. The other pieces that went into the program obviously were the students themselves who were part of the program and additional educational family support services. Based on these inputs, the activities that the program was able to offer, and what I said activities are actual services, right? They were able to provide mentoring, tutoring, family and teacher child events, uh, parent events, which included ESL classes and a women's support group. Based on the set of activities, there were specific sets of products um, connected to the activities uh, them themselves. And what I mentioned prod uh, products being is that uh, they are accountable products resulting from the activities themselves, right? So what you begin to see the connection here is that mentoring is now connected with the product around time within caring and engaging adults, right? The tutoring piece is now partly connected with time spent on academic uh, projects. Part of the products for this program also included surveys, uh, student performance on tests, student attendance records, and the documentation of duration of matches between mentor and mentee and student school records. So in this context, Given the inputs, the resources that were placed into the program, the program was able to offer particular sets of services that will ultimately lead to specific outcomes at uh, for students. And so the first short-term outcome that they anticipated was increased attendance rates, decreased school-based disciplinary problem referrals, productive out-of-time school time, increased 
number of social support networks uh, for students. So the connections I want us to start making connected to the activities themselves, right, is one, they're assuming that uh, mentoring, uh, but also um, through mentorship and having time with a care and, and engaged adults, that they would see an increase in, in attendance in school, but also see a decrease in school-based disciplinary problem referrals, uh, but also see productive out of school time and then creating this level of support networks uh, for students as well. So then at an intermediate level, uh, what we will potentially see is academic gains, increased engagement in self and community, increased uh, volunteerism among participants, and increased levels of student competencies. To the long-term outcomes being academic achievement, decreased juvenile dis um, delinquency, but also positive youth development. So what you begin to see in the outcomes is that at an immediate level, what you could potentially see is some small shifts um, to then over time being able to see these greater shifts that the program anticipates um, would be uh, occurring as a result of participating um, in the mentoring uh, program. So what I want you to be thinking of as we move into developing your logic model is really um, thinking about what are the sets of resources that are going into the program you're proposing to evaluate? What are those sets of services that the program actually offers? Uh, what do you think are the products connected to those services, right? And it's often really around the time that's being spent in the program. Um, and what um, do you see being some of the actual short-term outcomes, but long-term outcomes? Because for your logic model, you're only going to focus on the short um, and long-term outcomes. So the next um, session will really focus now on how you will measure uh, those prospective outcomes and then what would be the most appropriate design to really assess uh, uh, the actual outcomes uh, themselves.